In this video, I would like to take you through setting up some of the most commonly used features on the Jaguar XE, and also show you a few features that are a little less obvious, but no less useful for that. Now, the first thing I would recommend is to download the Jaguar iGuide app. This contains not only a full searchable copy of the handbook, but also a reference guide for warning lights on the dashboard, a frequently asked questions section, and a visual tour around the inside and outside of the car with information on the controls, buttons and features. It's a great source of immediate information when a question pops into your head. Or you just see a button and you wonder, well, what does that do? Another download is the Jaguar Remote app. Your car comes with a SIM pre-installed by the retailer, who should have spoken to you about the setup of your account that enables many of the intelligent features on the car, and we'll come on to some of those later. OK, let's start then with the smart key. Lock and unlock seem pretty obvious, with a reassuring click responding to each one. Pressing the lock button just once will lock the car. Pressing twice will double lock. Now, this means the car can't be unlocked from the inside, so even if someone smashes a window, they still can't open the doors. This simple step is crucial to keeping your vehicle secure. Always double lock, either from the key fob or via tapping the door handle twice for vehicles with keyless entry. You'll hear a beep to confirm this is done successfully. Next, there's a button to unlock just the boot. This will open automatically. Powered boot lids can also be operated by the button above the number plate on the outside, a button by the driver's knee inside, or a button on the back of the boot lid. If you have the hands-free gesture boot lid, so long as the smart key is in your pocket, sweeping your foot under the rear corner of the car will trigger the boot lid to open or close. You can use the smart key to trigger the headlights, so if you're approaching the car in the dark or simply trying to find it in a dark car park, this will switch the lights on. By default, they'll stay on for 30 seconds, and this can be extended up to four minutes if you want, using the settings controls inside the car. More on that later. Unlocking the car will also trigger the headlights, and they'll remain on for a short period after locking to provide light to see you to your door. The final button is a panic alarm. Press for three seconds or press three times in three seconds, and the horn will sound and the hazard lights will flash. After five seconds, this can be cancelled by pressing three times again or holding for three seconds. Holding the unlock button down will operate global opening, lowering all the windows to allow air into the car before you enter on a hot day. Now, similarly, if you get out and then realise you've left a window open, hold the lock button to activate global closing to raise all the windows and secure the car. These operations can be enabled or disabled using the settings options inside the vehicle. If your car is fitted with keyless entry, you don't even need to remove the key from your bag or pocket. So long as it's within a foot or so of the car, as soon as you put your hand around the door handle, the doors will unlock. When you leave the car, place your thumb on the end of the door handle to secure the vehicle. All our latest models have a Jaguar in-control secure vehicle tracker fitted, and your retailer will have performed the first steps in the setup process. You should have received an in-control email inviting you to activate the tracker, and it's worth checking your junk folder if you haven't seen it. The activation process takes less than two minutes, and once complete and the product is activated, you can download the certificate from within the in-control portal. If your insurer wishes to see proof of an activated tracker, simply go to the Your In-Control Services section to find it. Getting into the car then, the first thing you need to do is find a comfortable position. Seat controls can be found on the outside of the seat and steering wheel adjustment is either electric using a joystick on the right hand side of the steering column or manual. Just turn the dial on the side of the steering column and then adjust for reach and rake to suit and then turn the dial again to lock back in place. Mirrors are adjusted using the controls mounted on the driver's door. Select which mirror to adjust using the buttons and then use the joystick to adjust the angles. Incidentally, if you have power folding mirrors, pressing both buttons together will fold them in, useful if squeezing through a tight gap. Once everything is adjusted to your satisfaction, if you have memory settings, you can save these positions. Just press M button, and then within five seconds, press one of the numbered memory settings. You'll hear a chime to confirm that it's saved. You can switch between stored settings just by pressing these numbered buttons. Great if you share the car with another driver. Controls for the electric windows are located on the driver's door. 
locking the operation of windows from the rear seats will also engage the child locks on the rear doors. Most people are going to want to leave their windscreen wipers set to auto. Just move the stalk to its lowest position and then come up one notch. Sensitivity can be activated using the rotating collar. Pull forward for screen wash. Similarly, the headlights are best set to auto by rotating the outer collar. Pulling the stalk towards you will flash the main beam. When driving at night, pushing the stalk away from you will toggle the main beam on and off. If your car is fitted with auto high beam assist, the car will automatically dip main beam if it detects oncoming traffic. If you have matrix LED lights, the car will keep main beam on almost all the time, creating cones of shadow around other road users so they're not dazzled, but maintaining full beam everywhere else. This mode operates above 30 miles an hour and requires the lighting control to be set to auto. Now there's an array of controls on the steering wheel. On the right hand side are the controls for cruise control. Pressing set whilst travelling at your preferred speed and the car will automatically maintain that speed until you touch the brakes or press cancel. Pressing the accelerator will cause the car to speed up but when you release it it will return to the set speed. Pressing plus or minus will increase or reduce the set speed. If cruise control has been cancelled, pressing resume will return the car to the last set speed. If your car has adaptive cruise control, a radar monitors the speed of the car in front of you. And if they're travelling slower, the car will automatically match their speed. The buttons on the left and right will increase and decrease the distance between you and the car in front. Whilst you need to be travelling over 20 miles an hour to activate cruise control, adaptive cruise will match the speed of the car in front all the way down to zero. If the traffic restarts within three seconds, your car will pull away with that traffic. Any longer, and you'll need to give it permission to go with just a gentle press on the accelerator. This function means that adaptive cruise control can be used in tiring, stop-start traffic situations. The LIM button switches the function between cruise control and speed limiter. Lane keep assist can be toggled on and off with the button marked with converging white lines. If the heated steering wheel is fitted, the control will be found here. On the left side, the roller controls volume and buttons either side skip tracks or change radio stations. Pressing in on the roller triggers the instrument panel menus, allowing configuration of the head-up display, trip information, driver display layout, vehicle airbags and tyre pressures, and media selection. The roller and arrow buttons control navigation through these menus. Explore these options to set the car up to your preferences. The phone icon will answer an incoming call, end a current call, or start the process to dial a contact on a connected phone. The voice button primes the system to listen to voice commands. Just wait for the chime, and then tune radio to BBC Radio 2. Voice control can also now be initiated with a wake-up phrase. The default wake-up phrase is set to Hey Jaguar, but you can also set a name of your choice, e.g. Hey Sophie. Names with at least two or three syllables work best. The system uses natural language understanding, so commands could be Hey Jaguar, call David's mobile. Hey Jaguar, take me to Buckingham Palace. Or Hey Jaguar, increase cabin temperature to 24 degrees. To make the most of the advanced connectivity features offered by XE, you'll need an in-control account. If you don't already have one, you can create one at www.jaguarincontrol.com forward slash owner. To add the car to your account, it will need to be parked close by and in an area with good signal. When prompted, add the XE to your account by pressing and holding the roadside assistance button located in the overhead console until the light flashes at a slower rate. This should take around 10 seconds. You have 60 minutes to complete this step. Then return to the website and follow instructions to complete registration. Download the Jaguar remote app to your phone and sign in with your in-control account details. This will allow you to locate the vehicle, lock and unlock it remotely and initiate remote climate. Starting the car is as simple as putting your foot on the brake pedal and pressing the start button. So long as the smart key is in the car somewhere, the engine will start. When you first switch the car on, the main 10-inch touchscreen will greet you and at the bottom of the screen there's an option to set up your vehicle. We highly recommend you click on this as the system will walk you through a few key steps to streamline the setup process. This will lead you to select your language of choice and from here you'll be prompted to add a name for your personal profile and you must choose a graphic for that profile to proceed and then input your in-control account details. 
Each authorised user of the vehicle can have their own profile linked to their own in-control account. When you've done this, you may receive a message saying there's no internet connection and giving the option to enable connectivity. Select this and then switch on mobile data and agree to the terms and conditions. Once you've enabled mobile data, return to the sign-in screen by pressing the X at the bottom right of the screen. Tap the sign-in button and when sign-in has completed, you'll be given the option to set a four-digit passcode to secure your data and then the option to remember this passcode to automatically sign you in whenever you start the vehicle. Pivi will then prompt you to pair a phone. On your phone, simply go to Settings and then Bluetooth and search for New Device. Select Jaguar XE and then confirm pairing on both your phone screen and then the Pivi screen. There are options to enable both audio streaming and telephone communications. For display and reading of text messages, it may be necessary to select the Jaguar XE Bluetooth device on your phone and then select Enable Notifications or Text Messages. You can then pair additional phones to the system or continue. There's always the function to add more phones later. Pivi allows two phones to be connected simultaneously, for example, work and personal phones. When either phone rings, you can answer the call via the vehicle's touchscreen or the control on the steering wheel. For making calls, you can switch between focused phones directly from Pivi's home screen. Finally, Pivi will prompt you to select your favorite radio stations to add to your favorites list. Following a short animation, showing a few tips of how to navigate Pivi, the main home page will appear. The setup wizard will be offered on the greeting screen every time you start the vehicle. Multiple drivers and profiles can be added and Pivi will remember each driver's preferences to deliver a personal experience. It can also analyze behavior to pre-select navigation routes and destinations based on your regular routine. Pivi Pro's new home screen has been designed to allow direct access to the features and information you use most. Depending on your preferences, this allows 80 to 90% of the tasks you use to be carried out directly from a single screen in two taps or less. By default, Pivi Pro's new home screen offers direct access to navigation, media and telephone, and the most common features and information associated with each. Pivi offers a consistent, logical interface. On the left-hand side, there's the clock and connectivity details, and below that, shortcuts for the standard surround cameras and settings. On the right-hand side, you can switch between driver profiles, jump straight to navigation, phone or media from virtually anywhere in the system, or launch one of the additional apps available. Pressing the cog icon will take you into settings, where you can find options for connectivity, languages and many vehicle safety features. It's worth looking through these to understand the full range of customization available. Quick settings allows you to choose a dark or a light display theme and adjust the screen brightness. The next tab is context sensitive, presenting options from the application you jumped here from. So if you press the settings icon while in the navigation app, it'll say navigation. Coming from the home screen, it gives options for the home screen layout. Selecting all takes you into options for driver profiles. Then connectivity, which includes Bluetooth, mobile data and Wi-Fi connection. Vehicle, which allows configuration of driver assistance features like lane keeping and parking aids, security features, exterior light settings, which includes headlamp delay and setting the lights for driving abroad. Convenience, which controls the global opening and closing of the windows. Units allows customization of display units and My Vehicle shows the next anticipated service date. Back to the home screen where you can customize the functions on display. Extra tiles can be added to the home screen by swiping left, and selecting the edit icon. Then tap or drag desired tiles from the bottom to the top, reordering them to your preference. And when you return to the home screen, you can simply swipe through all the tiles. Now many tiles show live information, like the power distribution to various climate systems, or just the name of the radio station or song that you're listening to. Let's look at the three main tiles. If no phone is connected, the phone tile will prompt you to pair a device. With a phone connected, the phone tile shows which of the connected phones is currently active for outgoing calls. Options below access recent calls or favorites data if your phone supports this, as well as the ability to switch between connected phones for outgoing calls. Lists can be scrolled, and just tapping on a contact from the recent calls list dials the number, all without having to leave the home screen. Connecting a phone with a USB cable enables Apple CarPlay or Android Auto, 
both are standard on XE, although some Android phones may require the free Android Auto app to be installed. You may also need to switch the service on for your device by going to Settings, All, Connectivity, and then either CarPlay or Android Auto. This allows the control of compatible phone apps via the main screen. Most music playing and podcast apps are supported, as well as streaming services like BBC Sounds and Scala Radio. Connecting your phone in this way also allows voice access to your phone assistant using a long press on the steering wheel button. Send text message to Dad. What do you want to say? I'll be there in around 20 minutes. The next tile to look at is Media. Now the home screen shows what is playing along with buttons for Source and Favourite radio stations. Favourites can contain DAB, FM and AM based stations. There's also an icon to instantly mute or pause playback. You can even access your playlist or upcoming music list if supported by your phone's music player. Clicking on the media icon launches the media play screen, providing access to the full station list. Tapping stars will add them to your favourites. The phone I've just added will also now show as a source, jumping into the last audio played on the device. Browse will allow access to the full range of songs, artists and albums available on the phone. And again, many selections can be made using the voice control system. The last of the main three tiles to examine is navigation. With no destination set, the home screen provides shortcuts to set home as your destination, search and direct access to your recent destinations. Pressing search takes you to the full screen navigation view where you can click on a search category. Selecting one of these will display nearby options and give access to ratings and reviews if available. Parking options will even show the hourly rate for the car park. Whichever way a destination is chosen, just clicking on Go will calculate the route according to your preferences in navigation settings. If you prefer, you can click on Routes to choose between the fastest, shortest and the most economical route options. Instead of searching by category, you can input a search term wherever you see the search box in navigation. Now this can be a place name, place type, e.g. Italian restaurants, or an address or postcode. Destinations can also be easily set by voice. Take me to 33 Baker Street, London. As well as appearing on the main 10-inch touchscreen, navigation instructions will also be shown on the interactive driver display. This can be reconfigured by pressing Menu and selecting Display, and then Layout to choose between a one or two dial display with info panels that can be configured to show the map or media information, or do away with the dials for a clear, streamlined digital layout. You can even bring the map across the whole screen, retaining a digital readout of your speed. The full screen map view can now also display additional information such as traffic incidents en route or a list of upcoming manoeuvres. With a destination set, the home screen's navigation tile options change to cancel guidance, mute or unmute voice turn-by-turn -turn instructions and access to en route information. Tapping on this displays a list of traffic incidents and the associated delay or rest stops along your current route. Simply click on a destination for the list for it to be added onto your route as a waypoint. PV Pro learns your regular journeys. On startup, the navigation tile will display up to three predicted destinations, each with an estimated time of arrival, taking into account your usual driving style and current traffic conditions. If you sometimes drive to the same destination using different routes, it will also identify which route is the fastest based on current traffic conditions. Tapping on the destination shown in the navigation home screen confirms this as an intended destination. For frequently used routes, the system displays the route but doesn't provide turn-by-turn -turn voice instructions. However, if you enable the Smart Voice Guidance feature in the navigation settings, the system will announce any issues on your commute and provide alternative route guidance. If this results in driving on unfamiliar roads, the system will automatically enable voice guidance. On returning to familiar roads, the system will automatically mute voice guidance so you can fully enjoy the XE's sound system. An additional navigation setting labelled Auto Smart Commutes even allows the automatic initiation of your most regular journeys. This means you can start your morning commute and still get traffic updates without having to press any buttons except the one you use to start the car. XE is equipped with a 4G data connection, providing over-the-air performance updates of the infotainment and other vehicle systems and allows the addition of new features over time. 
When an update is available, it will alert the driver via the menu touchscreen and ask for permission to update when you complete your journey. Some updates may require the vehicle to be switched off and locked while the update is carried out. For convenience, these updates can be scheduled for a suitable time within a two-week period. The data connection also enables a variety of connected navigation features and services, such as real-time traffic information, parking availability, safety camera locations, live search, as well as monthly navigation map updates. It also enables the online pack, which allows synchronization and streaming from various online accounts, including Spotify, Deezer and TuneIn, and Google and Microsoft calendars. You can also view weather at your destination and even pay for parking from the vehicle's touchscreen using Ringo. To set this up, go to the app launcher, select accounts, and then select the type of account that you wish to connect. You'll then be given the option of an emailed link or a QR code. Simply scan this with a phone that already has these accounts added and Pivi will do the rest. Once added, Spotify, Deezer and TuneIn will show up as additional media sources alongside your phone and radio bands. The Agenda app allows you to set the location of an appointment in your calendar as the destination with just one tap, or call the meeting organiser with one tap if you're running late. There's no need for additional mobile data contracts or SIM cards. If there's a valid active subscription, mobile data is included via a built-in SIM card. The connected navigation subscription is included for three years. In Control Remote, which allows remote access to your vehicle via the remote app, includes a three-year subscription, whilst the online pack is included for an initial one year. On renewal of a subscription, the associated data plan required is also renewed. Back to the home screen. The camera icon reveals the 3D surround camera views that can simulate an overhead view as well as a full 360 degree surround view from outside the vehicle. Each of the camera icons on the overhead view presents a different view, allowing you to switch between different virtual camera positions for a better view. Front and rear cameras can be selected in ultra wide view, so when pulling out of a blind junction or reversing out of a tight parking space, you have enhanced vision left and right. Below the main touchscreen are dials for climate control. These can be set independently for driver or passenger or locked together by pressing sync. Pressing the dials in will modify the dial to control heated seats. Between the dials you'll find controls for heated front and rear screens and air recirculation. And if your phone is Qi compatible, this bottom stowage area can house the optional wireless device charging feature if specified. Perfect for doing away with those pesky cables. Once the engine is on, the 15 watt charging pad can not only charge your phone, but will also improve your phone signal through the latest cellular boosting technology. Jaguar XE uses a pistol shift gear selector. Press the brake, squeeze the trigger on the back and nudge it towards you for forward drive or away for reverse. Whilst driving forward, nudging the selector to the left puts you into sport mode and this will alter the operation of the automatic gearbox, holding onto gears longer to give punchier performance. You can manually shift up and down the auto gearbox by moving the pistol shift uh, to the left and then nudging up and down, or by using the paddles either side of the steering wheel. In drive mode, the system will revert to auto operation after about 10 seconds. But in S mode, you'll remain in manual control of the gears. To return the car to automatic operation, hold the right paddle towards you for about a second. The paddles can be configured so that they're only active in sport mode by going to settings, and then vehicle and convenience. When you come to a stop, simply press the P button on top to put the car into park, or switching off the ignition will automatically return you into park. XE has a range of driving modes, accessed with the rocker switch next to the gear shift. Set to comfort as standard, the switch will cycle through dynamic, eco, and the rain, ice, snow setting, useful for low traction surfaces. Each mode will affect the power delivery, gear shifting and traction control to give the best possible control and response. More information about these modes and the old surface progress control can be found in the owner's manual. If your car has adaptive surface response fitted, it will automatically adjust performance and handling to improve progress in challenging conditions. The electronic park brake will disengage automatically when you drive away and re-engage when you switch the engine off. A manual override control is located down by the driver's knee. When driving, be aware that a start-stop system is standard. 
so the engine will cut out when you come to a stop, instantly restarting in the time it takes for your foot to move from the brake to the accelerator when you pull away. This can be overridden with a control on the centre console, but it delivers a surprisingly high fuel saving and helps reduce air pollution in cities and towns. All cars are fitted with exhaust filters. These need to refresh occasionally and you may notice more visible exhaust emissions whilst this is happening. For a diesel, it tends to happen when the car is being driven at higher speeds and the exhaust gets hot. For a petrol, it happens more frequently when you lift off the throttle and more oxygen passes through the system. Occasionally, the car may display a message saying drive to clear. This is most common on diesels which have been used predominantly for short, low-speed journeys, in which case they need a blast down a dual carriageway. For petrols, it happens when they've been used under load, like towing. Find occasions to lift off the throttle and slow using engine braking to clear the filter. Automatic braking systems for city driving are standard and detect other traffic, pedestrians and cyclists, preventing collision or mitigating damage. Cars fitted with adaptive cruise control have a high-speed emergency braking system. The lane keep system will provide a torque steer back into the lane if your car thinks you're drifting beyond the lane markers, so it's important to indicate when changing lane. If blind spot assist is fitted, the door mirrors incorporate a blind spot warning system, lighting up when a vehicle is travelling alongside and flashing rapidly to warn if a car is closing to overtake. If you start to move into the path of an adjacent vehicle, the car will deliver a torque steer in an attempt to avoid a collision. These driver aids are designed to intervene when there is no input from the driver, which is surprisingly hard to simulate, so please don't try to test these systems. Any input from the driver will override them, and they do not reduce the driver's responsibility to drive safely and attentively. They can be deactivated, but as all of them have been shown to save lives both inside and outside the vehicle, they're switched on by default and we recommend leaving them that way. For additional safety in the event of an accident where the airbags are deployed or the fuel safety cutoff is activated, the car will automatically contact emergency services, sending GPS location data. Emergency services can be contacted at any time by pressing the right hand button above the rear view mirror. The left-hand button summons breakdown assistance. Both these buttons have covers to avoid accidental operation. When refuelling, simply press the filler flap. So long as the car is unlocked, it will open. A smart mechanism will prevent filling with the wrong fuel. Diesel vehicles will occasionally need topping up with diesel exhaust fluid. Warnings will flash up on the information display to let you know when you're running out. You get about a thousand miles notice, and if it runs out as a legal requirement, the engine will not start. The filler spout is located in the boot on the left-hand side. Any Jaguar retailer will be able to do this for you, or full instructions can be found in the online owner's manual. Now, this video has really only touched on the essentials. Please make use of the iGuide app and the videos on our YouTube channel to find out more, or contact your local retailer with any questions. Thank you for your time, and enjoy your time with the Jaguar XE.